Hey, Christina here. Welcome to my crystal art series. Today I'll be sharing the story behind my piece, Spring Path Stones. Let's go. Here is my mood board, and these were the things that were inspirations when it came to creating this piece. So first off, the chrysophrase stone, and looking at the stone and really understanding what kind of colors this stone has and some characteristics to remember this stone by. So this stone, I noticed that it keeps a consistent look in terms of colors. So uh, greens and aquas contrasting with a rust copper look. And both of those colors are contrasting of each other, so I definitely wanted to play that up in my piece. Because of this rust feature that the stone carries, because it, I believe it has nickel in it, uh, and I guess with the reaction, it causes a rusty look. So it's actually really cool to see that type of reaction turn into something really beautiful and interesting. So for me, I decided to use that as an inspiration. I also looked into stone pathways because some of the stones, the way that they were being formed, they almost look like steps or like stone pathways in a forest or um, something that you would have in the garden. The way that they laid it out, it's really interesting because the stone itself, it's blocky. So it would have um, blocky, you know, colors within the stone. So it kind of played up with that idea of a stone pathway and what that stone looks like. Usually it has very thin layers of stone. Now that this kind of tied into lily pads because the way that the stone was laid out, its colors, its shape, and how the colors are broken up within the stone, it kind of had a really cool texture in terms of like the way the lily pad shapes are within the actual lily pad leaf. So I played up with that and I looked at the stone a little bit deeper and I really started to think about the forest again because it's really reminding us to tie back to nature again and that's so important for us. And I really dug a little bit deeper too because again the, the contrasting colors in the stone create interesting shapes, interesting edges and it reminded me of the leaf of a hosta. So I thought that was really unique and I want to play something up with that, that characteristic of edges, you know, looking like rust or the contrast between, you know, the, the top of the rock and the bottom of the rock. And then coming back, you know, we're talking about stone textures again. And I wanted to really hone in on shale because shale's very thin rock and it has a texture with very thin layers easy that you could break so it's very fragile so I wanted to play with that concept especially with the story that I have connected to this piece I also came about mountaintops as well I'm, I don't know how I was going to connect this type of thought to the piece but I thought it really played an interesting part with the shapes again so i just really getting inspired by rock shapes and you know sharp edges with curves and flat bottoms with rounded tops so playing up that characteristic i thought about the meadow as well the meadow has a very open feel but the meadow has very long s paths so the s path really kind of talks about this long journey and I really wanted to tie that in somehow and I was thinking about using it as a composition the S curve 
So I titled this piece Spring Pathstones for a reason. So this piece is a metaphor about going on a journey into the forest and you come across a pathway of stones. This symbolizes you entering your body's mind and going deeper into your thoughts as if you were walking deeper into a forest. I wanted to have that comparison. The path stones are pit stops for memories that caused damage to your inner child. And your goal here is to heal each one at every stop. The deeper you go, the darker and harder it will be to heal each stone. And just know that once all the stones are cleared, you'll feel lighter and more at one with yourself because you're able to be authentic and just be yourself with no judgment. And that was kind of the thing that I was tying the story into. We want to go down this pathway to clear any heaviness that we could be carrying within us that actually ties into our inner child. Some things that happened in the past when you were a child that has not found closure yet. So you want to make sure that you go to that pit stop and find closure and, and make that stone glow again in happiness and vibrations. So that's something that takes time to heal and that's why the S curve that I have within this layout really showcases it's a long journey but just enjoy the the process of healing. So I'm taking this into Procreate and again I started with a composition that I had in mind, the S layout, showing the pathway as a long winding road because the journey is a process using the monoline brush tool to roughly map out my piece. And I use the lasso tool to create my path stones, filling them in with an aqua green color to capture the characteristics of Chrysoface and continued using the lasso and masking in the shapes within the aqua green path stones to add contrast. So using a terracotta orange and a dark chocolate brown for the contrast to embrace the rusty qualities within Chrysoface. I brought in a simple background by just using the lasso tool and filling in that shape with a dark evergreen green to symbolize a forest. I came in next with a dry acrylic brush with apple green and tastefully added some textures to apply some direction to the piece to lead your eye and guide you down your path. And using that monoline brush tool again, came in with a mint green and added some highlighted areas to put a marking on each stone to showcase closure on each of them. And also in a way to get you out of the deep forest slash your deep thought. And lastly, to clean up the highlighted lines, I used my eraser tool to taper the edges. And that was it guys, that was basically the process in Procreate. And I took this into Illustrator now, and I set up my canvas, eight and a half by 11, and I made two rectangles, four by six, and I put them together side by side, found the middle, and I put a grid line there to mark the middle. I merged the two shapes together into one huge rectangle and I made L-shaped ticks in each of the four corners of the rectangle. And that helped with finding the actual size of the card when I printed out. Then moving on to placing the piece on the right side because that's the front of the card and I added in the other details on the back. So now we were all set to print. So I saved this out as a PDF and I printed it out on cardstock paper. 
and we were ready for scoring. So I took it to my drawing board and I took out my scoring kit and I used my scoring utensil to run a little indent about a quarter way down the page and I flipped it over so that the artwork was facing down and I finished the rest of the fold line all the way down the card so that the fold would be seamless and clean. Once I was done scoring, I moved on to cutting it down to size by using my ruler and X-Acto knife, lining up my ruler with the crop marks, the L shapes in each corner to make sure that everything lined up correctly. And once I cut it all down, I used the bone tool to run down the side of the card with a nice clean finish. And basically to complete this piece, I came in with metallic paint, but I wanted to use gold to highlight the accent lines. So the little highlights that I put into the stones just to showcase a check mark on each pit stop, knowing that we found closure. That's basically everything about this piece. I really hope that you enjoyed listening, and I thank you so much for following me on my crystal art series. And I hope that you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Keep smiling. Bye!